Hello, everyone, and welcome to this launch event session on Flexible Update Management. Uh, my name is Joost, and I'm co-presenting with Ricardo today. Um, Flexible Update Management we've had for a few months now. It's been in public preview throughout um, 2024 Wave 2, and now with 2025 Wave 1, we're very excited for it to reach general availability. Um, in short, Flexible Update Management lets administrators schedule environment updates with more flexibility. Um, and this can help meet the requirements of update-averse customers. So you might think of a customer that runs a 24-hour shop and doesn't want to go through an update every month, or a customer that has extensive testing requirements and simply needs more time for each update um, that they install. And secondly, this will also help reduce the workload of partners that are scheduling their environment updates for their customers over a longer period so that they can spread that workload over an entire year rather than have peaks uh, whenever major updates come out. Um, major minor updates are coming in a major update cycle now. The major update cycle starts with a preview period. During this period, um, administrators can create a sandbox environment on the new version to test the new functionality before the update becomes available in their production environments. Once this preview period is over, um, we go into the update period. Now, with flexible update management, this update period is always five calendar months with a fixed end date, meaning that the major update comes out every April will uh, have an update period that ends at the end of August. And every major update that comes out in October will have an update period that ends at the end of February. After this update period, we now move on into a grace period. This is a one month period um, during which we will attempt the update uh, every week. So it's no longer possible to pick any date. The update will run. If it fails, we will reschedule it to take place seven days after the original date. If it succeeds, you're out of the grace period and into the update period for the next major version. Um, during this period, this update cannot be postponed any further. So we'll schedule it, it will run at the date that we schedule, and if it succeeds, you're on to the next update period. If your environment fails to update during the grace period, so um, we've tried to update it a couple of times during the grace period, it has not succeeded. We then move on into the enforced update period, uh, during which we'll force the update to succeed by uninstalling any apps that are not compatible with the next version. Um, What's important about this, this uninstalled apps is that we will uninstall the app, but we will not delete the data. So if you later on install a compatible version of this app, the data will be available again. Um, minor updates uh, are the same in two ways. So first of all, we'll continue to ship a minor update in every month um, that we're not shipping a major update. So every month except April and October. Um, the default scheduling of these minor updates is also unchanged. So if you choose not to use any of the flexible update management features, your environment will continue to receive an update every month and it will be installed at the date that Microsoft schedules. Of course, you can now choose not to do these minor updates. So it's possible to skip minor updates and you can opt out of scheduling them automatically by scheduling an update to a later version before a minor update comes out. And that kind of goes into the fourth bullet here, where you can select a target version for an update. So if you're on, let's say, version 25.3 today, you can choose to update uh, to version 26.3 next and skip any versions that are in between those two. And finally, what's new is that you can now create uh, environments on any supported version. So during the update period for version 26, uh, which will run between April and August 2025, you'll be able to create new environments on version 25 or on version 26. So looking at the calendar for 2025, this is what our update cycle looks like. Um, it's April now, so we've just completed the update cycle for environments to update from version 24 to version 25. Um, this version was released first in October, so the update period ran until the end of February. We've had a one month grace period in March. And now it's April, we're forcing any environments that have not updated yet to complete this update. Um, at the same time of this grace period during March, we run the preview for version 26. And now that it's April, the, the regular update period has run and it will continue to run until the end of August, after which again we'll um, have a grace period in September and a forced update period starting in October. And finally, version 27, later this year, when it comes out in, in September, we'll follow the same pattern where the preview period overlaps with the grace period, and the force update period starts when the regular updates to version 27 start. Um, what's new with flexible update management, now that it's generally available, is that it's available globally. So the past few months, this is only applied to Microsoft localized environments. Starting with 2025 release wave one, 
Um, this is now available globally, so also on environment localizations that are not localized by Microsoft. Um, you also start to see the admin center changes come in. So you'll be able to choose a specific target version for your next environment update. You'll be able to opt out of an update until a specified target version. Well, Carter will show you how that works. And you'll be able to now create environments on any version. Um, finally, there's also API changes. So the, the API that we've had for years to manage environment updates will continue to work, uh, but it will not support any of the new flexibility that we're introducing here. So if you're using the API to schedule updates across all of your environments, I'd recommend that you look at the new API endpoints to use this new flexibility uh, in your automations as well. And now to see what it looks like in the admin center. Ricardo? Yeah, thank you, Jus. So I will uh, be glad to show you how you, as a tenant administrator, can leverage the new flexible update management capabilities in the admin center. So let's just jump straight into a demo. So I am a tenant administrator indeed, and I am already in the environment details page. I have my production environment open right here. So what stands out now is that we have repurposed a little bit this panel down here, which is now called Update Settings, and it provides a little bit um, slightly different information compared to what we used to show here. So first of all, you can notice we are running currently on version 25.0, so major minor version is 25.0. And currently, at this point in time, we have the latest available version that we can choose for an update is 25.5. So currently, it means 25.5 is the latest available version on which we can create environments and update this environment to. So then, we have this uh, section here called Next Update, which will tell us at this point in time, what is the next target version that this environment will be updated to and on which date. And lastly, but not least, uh, what is the latest date after which um, the grace period will start um, that we can update our environment to the next major version. So in this case, it will be 26.0. So in other words, we are allowed to stay on version 25.0 until this cutoff date. After that date, the grace update period will start, and then we will begin with these weekly update attempts. So, what happens now when we want to reschedule our update or pick a different target version? So, if we click on Modify here, then the usual Schedule Environment Update flyout opens up. And we already noticed that something is different here, because now we have the choice of the target version. We can pick any available target version uh, that is currently already, that has currently already been released, and those are marked as available. And additionally, we are also offered the possibility to pick any unreleased version up to version 26.4. So we have already mentioned 26.0 at this point in time has not been released yet. Then we are free to choose any version up to 26.4. So let's imagine I want to actually skip one of the next immediate minor updates. I want to target my environment already to version 25.4. So um, we can already see that, as usual, we can select an update date anytime in the future. So let's pick just a date for this and schedule the update. Then, of course, this is immediately reflected in this cell right here. We can now see it's pointing 25.4 on this date. But what if instead I want to pick a version that has not been released yet, so it is planned for some later time in the future? So let's say imagine that I pick 26.2, planned for June 2025. So at this point, we cannot pick a target update date for this version because the message here will indeed tell us that the update will automatically be scheduled after, within 14 days, um, since, the, since this specific version is released. So it will be Microsoft internally who schedules the version, who schedules the update to 26.2 for this environment. And at that point, tenant administrators will still be able to uh, reschedule the update to any other uh, date in the future. So if I pick this target version, this is again reflected here slightly differently. We can see we are targeting 26.2 scheduled upon release. So if I navigate back to the environments list page, we can see 
this choice is also reflected in the schedule update date column and in next update we can see we are targeting 26.2 but the schedule update date is not scheduled because of course we haven't we we were not able to pick a specific date for this target version at this point in time. But when the update becomes available and it is scheduled, then of course a new date will show up here. Okay, so now that we're done with the demo, let's uh, jump into some of the best practices that come uh, taking into consideration the new capabilities offered by flexible update management. So of course we've seen that historically speaking, majority of the environments could keep up with the latest versions, though they are usually sticking to the latest available versions and they can be updated with no issues. However, we do know that there are some environments that may actually start lagging behind with the latest version. So this is when you can benefit from the flexibility uh, offered by this new, this new feature. Um, but that, of course, comes with extra considerations about keeping your environments in an updatable state. Uh, it's important that you stay current with the extensions so that you can always make sure that they are compatible with the target versions that you eventually want to target for your environments. And therefore, it's also important to stay updated on the product changes. Uh, be aware of the what's new um, documentation that we always publish with every new version that is available in Business Central. Thank you. Thank you for watching.